Yeah. James, yeah, where are you? Hmm? We only have the Lambo for one day. Yeah, I know. And you're late. Wait, I'm I'm where we said we'd be. Yeah, I told you to meet in, in Mexico, right? Well, I'm... Um, wait, what exactly do you mean by Mexico? Yeah, like, like, like Mexico. Like, yo, bro, sick Mexico runs last night. Like, yo, do you want to go racing in Mexico? It's basically just like a bad joke for Facebook of absolving yourself of liability for street racing. Anyway, why are, where are you actually? Uh, about that. I might be a while. Ah, oh, no gracias. No gracias. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is a Lamborghini Huracan Evo. If you were ever worried that the original Huracan didn't look Lambo enough, then say hello to this. Visually and mechanically tweaked, the Huracan Evo takes the V10 from the Performante, screams to over 8,000 RPM, and puts its power to all four wheels. On our R8 video, people questioned the sense of buying the Audi when the more thrilling and seductive Huracan was only a few dollars away. Well, before you smash that piggy bank and charge into your local Lambo dealer, know that while the Evo starts at $300,000 Canadian, this one is optioned to over $400,000. So does the Lambo command the higher price? Well, we paid a visit to Grand Touring Automobiles, which has two epic locations in Toronto. It's not so much a dealership as it is a place where childhood posters come to life in vivid colour. And it's hard to not get giddy about this stuff, as the people who follow us on the Throttle House Instagram will know. Yes! It's a Lamborghini. Lamborghini! So while they weren't looking, we nicked the keys to this particularly bright 2020 Huracan. Ha! But, um, but thank you, Alex and the guys at Grand Touring for letting us borrow it. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fighter jet with wheels and a really good paint job. Eight and a half thousand RPM, 631 horsepower at my feet, 443 pound feet of torque. A lot of people are saying, well, that's low. It doesn't feel it. And that low torque number is because it's naturally aspirated. You don't get that mid punch that you might get from a turbocharger, but you, you can feel it really come into its own right at 7,000 RPM, and then it just screams to the red line. And that's, that's what this car is. That's why it's so special, and that's why we're going to miss these. Because to truly understand the Lambo, to truly believe what a V10 can do, you have to absolutely honk on it. Bit of an English day today. So we've got a bit of rain, a bit of wet. We're still gonna stomp on it though, because this is all wheel drive and it's got the uprated engine from the Performante, which begs the question, what is a Huracan Evo? Because I'll tell you what it's not. It's not a pacifist. God, this thing moves. Oh, it sounds so glorious. And the sound. God, it's not just exhaust, it's induction noise, and I can I can hear the internals of the engine right behind my head. It's just a symphony of noises, like nothing you've ever heard. If you thought the V10 in the RA was intoxicating, this just takes it up a notch. You know what's on my desert island disc? Just this. Shuffle, repeat, I don't care. Just this. The shifts are rapid, and these paddle shifters are apocalyptic. They look so awesome, but we'll talk about that in a minute. This seven-speed DCT is so fast. You slip it into Corsa mode, and the shifts become even more aggressive. Up shifts, down shifts. It jolts you on the upshift. It's really, really cool. Really, really properly quick transitions between the gears. It's just nuts. So the Evo replaces 
the base Huracan. There's, now you can only buy an Evo. If you wanted to buy a brand new Huracan, the Evo is the only one you can buy. The Performante is done. That's on the used market now. This has seven times more downforce than the outgoing Huracan, but still not nearly as much as the Performante, and it weighs more. And that's because this is part of Lambo's new philosophy of amplifying everyday life. They want you to be able to live with this. I'm gonna say life's a little bit better with it. Amplified is right. However, I have noticed that in the different modes, the car changes completely. Some cars don't have that much of a difference between the modes, but between Strata, which I'm in right now, it's quiet, the ride is stiff, but it's actually well damped. And on the highway in Strata, actually the loudest noise you hear is the air hitting the windshield, even though it's almost horizontal. But then you click over into Sport or Corsa, and the car just completely transforms. The sounds that it makes are different. The way that the suspension feels, the way that the steering feels, everything is just different. It's fantastic. It becomes sharper, more aggressive, more violent. In true Wizard of Oz metaphor, the R8 could be said to be the Tin Man. It doesn't. It want, it, it's wanting for a heart. This has heart, and it's got courage. So the only thing left for them to do at Lambo was to give this scarecrow a brain. And that brain is the big news here because it works in conjunction with the dynamic steering, the magnetic dampers, the powertrain, and the traction control. And now a Lamborghini first with the rear wheel steering and the torque factoring, all to help you drive really, really fast or keep you very comfortable. And it has a really cool name. Now I'm going to try and pronounce it right now, but I'm probably going to butcher it. So if you think you could do better, tag us in a story at the Throttle House on Instagram with you pronouncing it better. Okay, here we go. It's called Lamborghini Dynamica Veicolo Integrata, or LDVI for short. So what that actually means out here is that it's measuring my steering inputs through the corner. It's measuring yaw and pitch and a whole bunch of other stuff, wheel slip. And it's applying that information to all of those systems at one time. So depending on the mode that I'm in, it can make me go a lot faster, get me in trouble, get me out of trouble, or keep me comfortable, depending on what you want or how you're driving. However, that doesn't mean that it does everything for you. We're still just monkeys in shoes, and if you let this car go, it's not gonna save you. And we're on the Pirelli P0s on a rainy day. It can get pretty, pretty greasy out there. Definitely nothing has happened today, though, to make me think that. Nothing has happened. We've looked after this like it's my own child that I dropped. All right, we're in sport mode. The front end turns in so unbelievably well now. It just shoots in. The steering is super fast. The front end grip is beyond impressive for the road that I'm on and the tires that I'm on right now. I can't even imagine what this would be like on a dry track. <laughs> All right, this is mid-engine, obviously, so you're dealing with mid-engine balance, which means that as you go through the corner, the rear likes to kind of naturally rotate a little bit. You can get the sense of that through the chassis in this car. It's well, it's a very stiff car, so I can feel the rear kind of start to lift and move, which makes it exciting and scary if you don't know what you're doing. You can no longer buy a rear-wheel drive Huracan. This is all-wheel drive. It shows me on the screen where the power is going, which is unbelievable. And the power it puts down, even in the wet, is so confident. And it's all you want to do. This is an all-wheel drive system, but it is predominantly rear-wheel drive, which means that under throttle, I can feel the rear start to walk. It's just so exciting. It honestly feels rear-wheel drive for the most part, except then you don't crash. Hey, oh my God. <laughs> the car is livable in strata mode, but it is harsh. And fortunately, we have the lift button here, which if I press it, raises the car immediately. I would call that the Toronto button because there is a ton of potholes, even just curbs. It's an expensive option. I think it's like four and a half grand. But like the GT3 we drove this time last year, it's necessary if you live in a place like this. All I keep hearing about is a McLaren's hydraulic steering is better than this, and I can't wait to get in one because honestly, it's a bit numb, yes, but 
It's really, really good. It really is. No, the ride is not as soft as an R8, and the visibility also is quite wanting. But can you live with that? I bloody can. Ah. It's not as easy to get out of as the, yeah. uh, the art. Oh, I like it. Wow. As the Way to look like an old man. <laughs> Good job. Okay, styling. Yeah, too styled for you, apparently. <laughs> it looks like someone took the R8 and then rebuilt it out of knives. It looks incredible. Unbelievable. They knocked it out of the park with the first iteration. This yes. has a few changes. I think the most striking thing, though, is this color. Yes, yes. Right? You it's know what it's called? Orange? No, it's Arancio Zanto. Right, which sounds like a spell from Harry Potter, and yeah, it's it part of the the custom color collection, which yeah. is called Ad Personum, okay. which also does not scare Dementors away at all. Oh, okay. But it's sixteen and a half thousand dollars. What is the color? The color to get the custom color. Oh my god! Yeah, this is optioned with a hundred grand more than the base price. <laughs> That's one of the main factors. Okay. But it is an updated fascia, and unlike the R8, which you just mentioned, thankfully you're not paying $400,000 for a car with fake vents. That's what you've got to spend. <laughs> That's what it costs grand. nowadays, yeah. for no fake vents. Um, I'm the art of to differ. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, so all of this is functional. All of this is to reduce turbulence and increase downforce, and we've got cooling, heat exchangers, brake ducts, all this stuff. Yeah, well, and there's some new changes for 2020. So this, this Y shape is part of their the style guide now. There's also styling cues from other Lambos. So there's the Kuntash. My favorite. Right, which you like. That's so these are Kuntash inspired bonnet lines. Yep. These side air ducts are from the Mercia Largo. And these new wheels, these new 20 inch wheels. They're absolutely perfect. And the two piece brake rotors, carbon ceramics are standard on this car. Yes. That's incredible. You know what though? These wheels are cast, whereas the Audi, which is 160 grand cheaper, are milled. Were milled. From aluminum. And we shot that down, but then if you actually look at the R8 decennium version where they're like bronze, yeah. it looked unbelievable. And I don't think these look as good. I think these look pretty awesome. But I'm, I'm it doesn't matter because you can see the engine right through there, V10. just like the Audi. And the exhausts this year are raised up a little bit to match like higher end Lambos. But what I did notice is when I was like driving behind you and I was shining the light in your exhaust tip, yeah. the actual exhaust pipe doesn't perfectly line up with the tip. What do you mean? On, on this one. Look. It's oh, a, I see. Italian build quality, baby. Discount. <laughs> Sorry, Discount. Yeah. But honestly, though, I think this looks just so cool. You could almost say that because it hasn't got the giant wing from the Performante that it looks muted on the back. What? No. No, it does not. It's absolutely mad, James. Look at it. We got the exhaust pipes and this crazy diffuser. I can see through into the exhaust itself. I got the engine right here. I got the V10 badge. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. No, I, I, I agree. You're wrong. I agree. <laughs> and the $16,000 color doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't. All right, no. Let's look at the interior. Okay. <sighs> oh. What are you going to learn? <sighs> Supercar, not Saab. Yeah. Ouch. Speaking of which, though, doth my ears hear a Mercedes uh, creak? <laughs> that's not okay. That's, that's not too bad. so good. Not it's so really good. loud. It is, yeah. Okay, we just won't lean on that. Okay. Hexagons. This is incredible. Everything a hexagon. Hexagon here, hexagon here. I just love how cool it is. Like Even these vents are Everything hexagons. about this is just cool. Good, because you're paying for it. You really are. This carbon skin, which yeah. is the new thing for 2020. Yes. Right? It feels nice. It looks mm -hmm. good. It's like five or six grand. Oh, man. Okay. Let's start with this gauge cluster because it's insane. It's just so spaceship. cool. It's a spaceship. The whole thing's a spaceship. Look at this. The start stop button. Immediately. Can I get that retroactively installed on, on my, any car? On my all my cars. Yeah. Yes. This is. New. I'm going to put it on all my doorknobs. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my computer. Coffee maker. <laughs> Everything. Everything's allowed. Reverse is so cool too. Eh? You pull up on this and it. Puts I, it I do a whole hand reverse. <laughs> of this. No, it's amazing. Yeah, so this is new down here, right? This screen. Yeah, this is an 8.4 inch screen that's new. Mm, that's They're very proud of the 0.4. It's like it's like a kid. I'm two and a half. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's right. Um, so obviously everything is controlled from here. I do find, though, that it's way down here. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no heads up display in this car. No. No, I, I don't remember why. Because it's too raked. The roof, the, the glass oh, is too right. raked. Oh, the, the glass is too. That is hilarious. Too horizontal. Okay, so you can see the LDVI system, which we already talked about, right? It tells you all the stuff that's going on. This is more information than you could ever take in while you're driving. Well, I think that's cool the point, for passenger, though. though. But the stuff that you don't immediately need while you're driving is here. 
Yeah. And everything else is here. And the other stuff is all on the wheel. The indicator. Yes. That's how you know you're in a supercar, by the way. I got in this car. I didn't know how anything worked. I was behind it, but I just saw the left turn signal and the right turn. Anyway. The seats, as cool as they look, yes. aren't as comfortable as the Audi. They're harder. Harder. You know I don't mind these. No? No, I no, think no, they're no. Longer journeys, these are stiff. I would see how they would get stiff, but they're yeah. comfortable by shape. Toggle switches across here. These are just the coolest looking things. Every, in the even you've got the toggles on the left there, just okay. for doing the the paddles. Come on, such an occasion. Just come on, right? Yeah, the R8, the R8 failed on the paddles hard. The, it the really, little, really little did. Little baby uh, yeah. clovers. Yeah. These these are like um, these look like a Star Trek weapon. They look like tomahawks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're so cool. Leather stitching. Obviously, the materials are quite nice in here, with the exception of that. It, it, it totally lives up to the drama of the actual driving of the car. Yes, right? absolutely And it, in that sense, the R8 matched it, I think. The R8 wasn't that dramatic. This feels way more squished there. And I find myself, you're looking down a lot. You are looking down. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to see stoplights. Right? Like, you're not looking down at people. No. Because humble, you know, humility. Yeah, yeah, knowledge. No, no the knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, just, it faces down. This is the coolest cabin I've ever sat in. Um, yep, easily. Unbelievable. Conclusion? So the Huracan Evo then brings the insanity and the drama necessary to be worth every single dollar more than the R8. Although neither Thomas or I would personally kit it out with so many options because 400,000 is getting well up there. And in the end, all you really need is that V10, an open road, and on a rainy day, a rather large pair of all weather tires in the rear. Yeah, safety first. Thanks for watching.